Hi, Davina. Listen, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and um, all the way from Dubai, UAE. Um, how's everything going? Thank you, Victoria. Yeah, everything's uh, going good. You know, we're surviving uh, post lockdown. Things are picking up here. Uh, so, yeah, everything is, is, is good. I think we're fortunate to be in the food and drink industry, so we weren't heavily impacted. Yeah. Um, you know, but yeah, things overall, everything's fine. Thanks. Amazing. So for the people that don't know who you are and what you do, obviously we've been in contact for many years and, um, you know, work closely together on a number of projects. But for those people listening who don't know who you are and what you do, do you want to just give a quick intro? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, I run a company called The Goods Collective & Co, which is a health food and drink distribution company based in the UAE, in Dubai. And from here, basically, our main mission when we set up around four and a half years ago was to bring in exciting, healthy, palatable, yet price competitive food and drink brands to the market. And so what we do essentially is we exclusively represent brands that fit into this category and supply them into retail, supply them into the food service and horeca industry. So at present, we're working with around seven brands on an exclusive basis and have a portfolio of around 250 items. And uh, we're supplying it to around 500 outlets across retail and across uh, the food service industry. Um, and yeah, that's sort of what we do in a nutshell. We, we try and be a little bit different in, in our offering as well, where we go the extra mile for our brands. You know, we participate in a lot of community-based events. We go and uh, do a lot of after sales support. And I feel one of our biggest strengths has been our customer service. You know, this has been mm. what has enabled us to get us to where we are. So yeah, the UA is a, is a, a very, as you know, is a very dynamic, a very diverse market, but a lot of growth and opportunity as always, just because of the type and the, the diversity of the population here. Yeah, it's a great place for doing business. And over the years, like you say, having worked there myself and obviously working with different clients and brands also, it is it is a really good place to do business. It's a great starting point also for people that are looking at the wider Middle East or the Gulf region to enter as exactly. well. Like you say, that diversity of consumers, expats, um, it's a really rich place. And there's pl there are plenty of opportunities um, that I'm seeing. And even with the work I'm doing, obviously, at the moment from home and remote working, we're still getting plenty of deals done and opportunities that we're finding um, from buyers and distributors, like you say, like yourselves. Um, so in terms of what you've seen um, recently as, as emerging trends um, from a health and wellness perspective this year, especially, I guess, with COVID, what are you seeing as the main kind of hot um, categories and trends on the health and wellness side? I think uh, if we're talking about the UA specifically, over the last uh, two years, we've uh, seen an explosion, I think, in everything vegan. You know, we've, we never had vegan restaurants. Now they're, they're easily, you know, in, in, in the major sort of areas in Dubai and in Abu Dhabi. And a lot of the traditional places, restaurants, coffee shops, they would never offer I guess vegetarian and vegan uh, options now, you know, it's very, very common to find these. So I feel even before the pandemic, the vegan wave and everything about sort of veganism and uh, dairy alternative was growing. But post pandemic, people have obviously become a lot more health conscious, you know, they're more conscious of what food they're eating, the ingredients, where, especially where the origin is from. People are a lot more cautious of a product maybe coming from somewhere like Asia versus somewhere like Europe. Mm. Um, so I feel definitely what, what's trending now is, is everything more vegan. And of course, organic, free from, it's, it's still definitely trending, but veganism more. And anything, because of the pandemic as well, anything that relates to immune boosting and, and sort yeah. of protecting one's health, whether it's to do with manuka honey or turmeric, or yeah. um, added vitamins is, is definitely something that is trending. But overall, I feel people are a lot more conscious. So people are taking the time to understand what they're buying and what they're consuming. Yeah, so yeah. It's a great time for anything health. 
Yeah, I, I would agree. And um, certainly on with some of the work I do on the supplement side of things, there's been a, a, a really, like you say, on the immunity side of things and having um, those kind of products to offer to the market has been a lot of demand that I've seen, uh, both on a branded basis and also looking, people also looking for you know, private label suppliers of those items as well um, to bring into right. market. It's interesting. So like you say, hot in those areas um, particularly. But then if we think about, in terms of doing business um, within the UAE and how to kind of enter the market, from your experience, um, what would you say are the, the key success factors for brands that, and manufacturers that are trying to enter the UAE? Uh, I feel finding the, the, one of the most important things is working with a good local partner. There's definitely a lot of um, routes to, to market into, into the UAE. But if you were to find a good local partner, you just get the added advantage of actually building the brand and creating that brand awareness, which wouldn't necessarily happen if you were to just maybe supply directly into the market via maybe working with the retailer directly, for example. Uh, because the UAE is such a, as we said, uh, such a diverse population and just how we're placed, I guess, in the world, we can get products from almost everywhere, whether it's Asia or Europe. You know, there's so much competition on the shelves. Of product, so I guess for somebody looking to enter, it makes sense for them to work with somebody who understands and a partner who understands the the market quite well and could position themselves and give them the advice accordingly. And again, for for health, UAE is not a very big market, mm. so you can cover both the retail and the food service sectors uh, quite easily. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. And like you say, understanding it is a competitive, whilst it's great opportunities, there's also, it's a competitive marketplace. So getting in with the right people on the ground or your right route to market that works for the brand owners is, is key. And yeah, you know, you, I, I've seen, and you know the same, a lot of brands that have kind of unfortunately, you know, not taken the right advice, not done their own due diligence um, and vetting the people yeah. that they have, particularly when they're approached um, from, you know, incoming inquiries and working on a more reactive basis. You know, they can often start supplying in um, through the wrong channels, the wrong fit, um, and it can all kind of unfortunately come tumbling down sometimes, which is, is always a, a shame when they've got great products. So I think that yeah. understanding and looking at the market and, making sure you're, you're vetting the people that you're having the conversations with and sometimes looking beyond the opportunities that's presented just there and then as well and seeing is there anybody else that might be a better fit um, that, that, that could work better in the marketplace when there's clearly an opportunity. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I think the, um, the, the other thing is, this, as you said, you have to be able to, people who are looking to enter this market, it's very different from Europe and the way other countries work. Uh, they have to be able to understand uh, this market, you know, understand the population, the size, who you're targeting. Yeah. And also the culture, the cultural side of it, whilst there's a lot of diversity as well, it's also because within that, then how to um, do business just in general, you know, you're dealing with lots of different nationalities and cultures um, within the market. And it's not always the same as, you know, the, the normal ways of working in your home market, that's for sure. And in terms of, expectations communication um the way that business is done you know that that i think as well is another key um factor that brands i think need to consider um and be flexible and open-minded about as well you know trying to do things yeah. the way they have back home or in the in some of the more maybe culturally closer um markets is not necessarily going to um going to work um in the yeah. way so and, um, and the, the, way I, the way I say it to um, suppliers or to brands is it's very easy to get maybe the initial order going, and I'm sure you'd agree, yeah. uh, and possibly maybe the second order. But then to see if you're going to get orders after that is, is I think, the actual test and to see if the product will actually stay on shelf. Because it's easy, actually. It's not, not easy, but it's relatively easier to get the product on shelf. But to, for the products and your brands to actually be able to sustain in such a competitive uh, retail environment is, is I think what the brands would need to consider. Yeah, definitely, definitely so. And like you say, it is competitive. So the way that they approach it, the right people, the pricing structure as well, um, you know, being being flexible in all those aspects is is really, really important. Um, in terms of, again, obviously getting into the market and getting on shelves is one thing. Um, 
a few other things that maybe is worth mentioning in terms of appreciating how to get products in, I guess, you know, things that around labeling and documentation, um, if you get any advice, advice on that or any tips? Yeah, I mean, over here in the UAE, we can't actually uh, import the product unless, uh, or any, any, any sort of barcode unless the product is registered with our local municipality. So I guess that's sort of step one to get a product registered. And for it to actually be imported, it needs to come with certain requirements. So we need to have certain ingredients and certain uh, words in Arabic, whether that's on the packaging or it can be an over label. And we have to follow a certain date for, for, format, whether it's uh, because then all of the UK products specifically come just with the best of four date. Mm. Um, yeah. But in the UAE, we require both the production and the expiry date. And again, that differs if a product for food service, if you know it's not necessarily needed, you don't necessarily have to have the Arabic on if it's for food service, but for retail, the requirements are a little bit more different where you'd need to have the certain ingredients and certain words in Arabic. Um, so, yeah. And you'd need to have the correct documentation export-wise as well. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've seen that fall down as well, where there's not been things around halal, the correct halal certification when it's been meat-based products um, that are not then authorised um, by ESMA, which I know is your authority there that, that regulates things like that. And obviously, like you say, not having the right documentation is... Yeah. Is, you know, it, it, you know, the, the products can arrive and if they're on, the, you know, they're laid on the docks and obviously it gets very hot, <laughs> very hot over there. Exactly. Um, yeah. There's all sorts of risks. So, yeah, like, like you say, making sure and being aware of those, what's required to get the product in compliance wise is, is yeah. also another important aspect of this for exactly. sure. Mm. Um, in terms of, um, I guess for, for yourself as well and within your portfolio, um, as someone that's out there on the ground and within the health and wellness side of things, what kind of qualities, um, I, what kind of qualities and attributes for products do you look for um, within, uh, sorry, I'll start that again. <laughs> um, so in terms of within, your, within, within your portfolio, when you're selecting a supplier or a brand, um, what kind of qualities do you look for um, when, when making that selection process? So I think the initial thing they would look for is it has to be something healthy. It doesn't have to be super healthy, but it has to fall under this grand umbrella of, of having a health element, whether it's low calorie or you know, vegan, but it has to have some health element. Um, the other thing would be is how, how niche is it? So a lot of products, um, especially in the health world, uh, that are being sort of manufactured and developed, they can, they might be suited and well suited maybe for the Western uh, market, but in the Middle East, we're still around two to three years behind the US and the UK. So how niche is it? Uh, this will sort of give us an indication of what to expect in terms of volume for both us and the supplier. The other thing we would consider would be definitely the price. Uh, you know, uh, we very quickly when we were working with any brand uh, initially would do a price analysis and see how we would able to, 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 to price it on the shelf and how it would compete with other similar products. And um, I guess one of the final things we'd look at is with packaging. Uh, you know, as they say, um, people look at look at the product before, uh, you know, anything else, to, which, which sort of drives them to actually pick it off the shelf. So it has to fall into a sort of neat, clean, attractive uh, packaging and sort of look and feel. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I guess those, these are sort of the main things that we look at. Yeah, definitely makes sense. Great. And in terms of, I guess, any top tips um, for brands and suppliers who are actively looking at the UAE market at the moment, see the opportunity, um, what would be, from your perspective, maybe the top top tips for successfully getting um, getting into market? I would say to, to any brand and even to the current suppliers that we're working with or potential suppliers, the number one is try and understand the market before you, uh, you, it's not, it doesn't, the way that it works in the UK, the way it works in Europe, the market here is very, very different. You know, it all comes down to, we have such a, as I said, and I'm repeating, we have such a diverse range of populations. So trying to understand the size, who you're actually targeting uh, and this will give you an indication of whether your product 
uh, you know, has the ability to, to give you enough volume, you know, to, to even then have to, to have that conversation with your partner before actually even demanding certain volumes of them. So understand, try and understand whether it's you work with people like yourself or work with, um, you know, coming with work with a, a, a local partner closely or coming on ground and analyzing yourself. But try and get an understanding of the market first before, um, you know, jumping the gun, as they say. Because a lot of, um, I think a lot of, of uh, retailers would would probably approach brands directly. Mm. And um, I mean, there's no, there's no harm in, in exploring it. But I will say before you do that, try and understand what you're getting into. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And also, like you say, I think sometimes being realistic that, you know, yes, there are opportunities, but the size of the opportunity may not be as big as, you know, yeah. they, they sometimes think it's going to be. Um, you know, if you were looking at the wider gulf, you know, it'd be the volumes are gen generally, you know, maybe in other places, but then the opportunity might not be as big either. So it's kind of that trade off, isn't it, between size of opportunity, the, the type of market and the right shoppers and consumers or food service channels that would would obviously warm to your product and and you know be willing to to work on it take it in and and build it so yeah okay yeah that's really exactly. helpful brilliant well listen thank you so much Davina for your time and you know your expertise and and sharing with us obviously top tips and everything that's going on in the UAE side of things at the moment so thank you very much and um I no hope I hope as soon as I can get back over there and uh, come and see you again and be in the market then I certainly will and look forward to seeing you very soon no worries Victoria it's always a pleasure talking to you and yes we look forward to having you in hot sunny Dubai very soon I cannot wait <laughs> all right Davina okay thanks. take care Thanks.